Welcome everyone to Twin Tours Academy Bootcamp, three days webinars. Today, day number one, we will talk about why we created Twin Tours Academy. And by the end of the session, we're gonna have questions and answers. Tomorrow will be webinar day two. We're gonna talk about the differences between the Western culture and the Eastern culture and how we can understand the scripture in Jesus mindset and how the West can meet with the East in order to see Jesus in his own Hebraic Aramaic way of thinking. And then we have questions and answers. And day three, day three, we're going to speak about and have interviews with previous students that took the courses, the Aramaic courses, the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic, learning the Aramaic alphabets, the Torah portions, and the geography of the Bible. And we're going to have also a special offer for you. And then we're going to launch Twin Tours Academy. These are the two main teachers in Twins Tours, Andre and Tony, the twins. We are Bible teachers. We are tour guides and authors of several books. A little background about ourselves and who we are and why we started Twins Tours Academy. Our family are Maronite Aramaic speaking indigenous Christians from the Holy Land. Yes, our language is Aramaic with Syrian dialect and is closely related to the Aramaic of Jesus. That is where we grew up in the Maronite church. Even I done a DNA test with Ancestry.com and they said 100% we belong to the Middle East, to this part of the world where you see it's in yellow, the north of Israel where Syria, Lebanon, where all these Aramean Christians started from ancient history. So we belong to the land. And it's all in great Syria. And this was so close to Jesus' ministry and the early Jewish believers, even the Maronites. Our liturgy uses many elements of Jewish prayers. And many Jewish prayers were also in Aramaic from the first church in Jerusalem. And even the liturgy of St. James that was taught in the first century, we still use it till today. So our church, our heritage honored, honors the Jewish patriarchs and matriarchs. So why, why we created Twin Stores Academy? We had put more than 20 years of experience as indigenous locals understanding Hebrew and understanding Aramaic and knowing the culture and the custom and the context of scripture. We will take you through a journey to see the land of the Bible through the Middle Eastern mindset. We will be able to connect the biblical test with the land and the current reality of the situation to tap into our Aramaic heritage and bring these beautiful sources from Hebrew and let you see the geography and open the Bible together from your own home and will take you to these sites and the Bible will become alive and so practical because we see so many Christians that come to Israel even, they completely miss the core meaning of the stories of the Bible. And it may, you know that how different the Middle Eastern culture is from the Western culture. So you will receive quality, virtual, biblical teachings to understand the Bible in a deeper way. Our hope is to help you understand the context, the culture, and the customs, and apply it in the 21st century. It's in the past, and in the present, and for the future, and how you can live it today. And what is the most important is to learn the depth, to learn the core 
of the meanings of the words in Aramaic and in Hebrew. And in that way, you can dig deeper and the scripture is so simple and it will make so much sense to you. We will bring Jesus, Middle Eastern culture and customs to life for your personal journey and your personal identity. We will focus, as I said, on culture, custom, and context of scripture. And when you experience God's word with historical context, the message of the scripture becomes much more clear. And when it becomes much more clear, your faith becomes stronger with a profound life-changing impact. And then confirmation to your faith will take place. Correction of understanding the words of God, and it will bring more clarity to your walk with the Lord. I'm going to give you one example about correction and what I mean by Hebraic and Aramaic scripture. In King James Version, John 14, verse 2 says, In my father's house are many mansions. Now, in Hebrew and in Aramaic is totally different. In Hebrew and Aramaic, it says, in my father's house are many dwellings, many room dwellings. And I want to show you here a map of Capernaum. And this is in Greek, what is called a dwelling or an insula. This is one insula. This is another dwelling. This is the third dwelling and the fourth dwelling. Insula means a place where people live together where there are many dwellings. Insula is discovered in Samaria, in Capernaum, in Mount Arabel, and even in the Negev. So in my father's house are many mansions. The Greek translator was not aware of the Hebrew and the Aramaic, and he said mansions. Let me read it for you in Hebrew. Bebait abi yesh harve megorim. The house in the house, the bite in the house, Avi, my father, Yesh, there is Harbe Megorim, which means many dwellings. Dwellings consisted of central courtyard. You see here, this is in Capernaum. This is the central courtyard with rooms all aside nearby it and living rooms and other rooms. And Jesus' hometown, like here in Capernaum, there were small house rooms surrounded with large courtyards. And when the need arose, the insula was simply gradually enlarged by adding more and more buildings to the compound and the courtyard still dominated the domestic space. So this is what Jesus is trying to reveal about heavens. And let me read for you in Aramaic. Sigayin anon ono bebait abi which literally means Sigyan means many dwellings. It starts with this, many dwellings, anon dwellings, ono in Bebait Abi, in my father's house, there are many dwellings. You see here, there's a courtyard and is the same and many rooms around and it's like heavens. And this is what Jesus tried to prevail. Because look, each nuclear family would have lived in a single room and shared the courtyard with the other families. This is the main courtyard that all the people will come and even other kids will come from other rooms and neighbors. And archaeologists had estimated that the home of Peter in Capernaum can consist at least from 15 rooms and could accommodate at least 100 people. And the description is surely the visual image Jesus had in mind in his teaching about heavens. And when Jesus is talking about, in my father's house are many dwellings, the disciples is understanding the community because the father who is here is enjoying in the, the presence of all the family and dwelling together in peace and love and like a... Uh, a family style. And this is how heavens will look, not mansions like the English translation. That was only one example. 
So again, why Twin Stores Academy? Many people had the, priv the privilege to make the journey to Israel, but still it's not possible for so many other people for so many reasons. First of all, it can be expensive and it needs a physical challenge and time out of work. And some people feel anxious traveling and to the Middle East. So what we have done, we brought for you scripture to your own home. You can have it in your own office or mobile phone anytime, anywhere you like, according to your comfort time. Also, in the website, we have free weekly live webinars every Thursday, starting at 7 p.m. Israel time. There is a different teaching. We will take you to understand the scripture. will come alive to you. We will take you to sites and not only see the sites, we will open our Bibles. And not only that, we will read from the original Hebraic and Aramaic scripture and that you can see and you can understand the word of God and connect it and make it practical to your daily life in a very simple way. Of course, it will be 7 p.m. Israel time, 12 p.m. New York time. It depends on which part of the world you are, but 7 p.m. Israel time. Twin Stores Academy. We have so many courses, Jewish festivals, the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic, historical geography, Torah portions, idioms of the Bible. We're going to take several idioms and understand it according to the culture and the custom and the context of the Bible. And also, there will be free courses too, like idioms of the Bible or Jewish festivals. A lot of free courses. The core structures are like we have already, already eight courses. And each course have more than eight lessons, and each lesson is around one hour. So you have more than 70 hours of teachings. And each week we'll add a new hour, a new lesson, and each month we will add a new course. You have a fortune of knowledge in your hands. And I give you some examples of the courses we already have, historical geography of the Bible, Learn Aramaic, learn the Torah portions. Aramaic is about the Lord's Prayer, the Torah portions. As Tony will take you through reading how the Jews read in the synagogues and take the Hebrew and explain about the Hebrew. This is his niche. My niche is the Aramaic. But let us talk a little bit about why geography of the Bible is important. There's a complete course about it. You have to understand that all the authors of the scriptures were from this part of the world. So they are aware of the terminology. They are aware of these stories. But when Christians come from outside, they do not know geography. So geography will help us to understand the Bible through these courses. We will take you to the sites. You will see the geography. You'll understand why these specific stories took place in certain locations. So you will have a deeper appreciation of the God of the Bible, and it will benefit your spiritual life. And your faith will increase because the stories is coming alive to you. We connect you with the land and the Bible and scripture and the reality of what's happening today in your life. Anyway, another course is about the Lord's Prayer in Aramaic. And we're going to learn all the 22 alphabets. And you're going to start learning these alphabets. I'm going to give you an example. A is Olaf. And every Aramaic alphabet have a meaning. Olaf means the oxen. The oxen is in every first century village, you should have the oxen because it's for breeding. It's very important. This is the main thing in every town. So it's number one important. Beth, Beth in Aramaic means a house. Even look how you write it. It's like a house, but it's not the physical house. It's the meaning of the community, the people together. Gomal, Gomal. 
and gomel means a camel. That was the mean of transportation at that time. So the letters were about the lives of the people and how they developed dolaf. Dolaf means the gate, is the gate of the city. So if the gate is strong, it's protected. No one can conquer you. I'm just giving you an example. And then we have more, more courses. I have a course completely about signature tool, my signature tool. You will travel through 10 days in the Holy Land. And we're gonna go chronological through the life of Jesus from birth to resurrection. So you don't have to come. It's great if you can come to Israel, but if you can't, we will bring Israel to you. We will take you through videos of more than 30 hours of touring the land from one side to another, starting in Bethlehem to learn about the birth of Christ, going to Herodian archaeological park and speak about Herod and speak about the Magi's and then to the shepherd's fields and speak about the sheep and the shepherds and then to the nativity church where Jesus was born according to tradition. So we will take you step by step for 10 days and each lesson is one side and we're going to travel the roads of Israel virtually and learn about Jesus through the Middle Eastern mindset. You're going to tour and understand the depths and the Hebraic perspective of the first century culture, custom, and context. And you will understand the meaning of the Bible in a deeper way. So it's a 10-day tour, more than 30 lessons about the life of Jesus from birth till resurrection in a chronological way. And also, from your own home, we have for you more than 10 virtual tours in Israel at your own choice. You will choose what tour you want to go virtually there. For example, we take you virtually to the city of David. We're going to show you all the areas from the rooftops for the views the Kidron Valley, the Triporium Valley, the Hinnom Valley. Why did David chose? The, that place and that location to build his city. So the geography, the topography, and the text and the context, you will suddenly, your eyes will be open and understand Jerusalem for the first time. We will take you virtually there. We're going to take you also through the Dam of the Rock. We're going to take you even below the Dam of the Rock virtually and learn about Mount Moriah and learn what happened there and where tourists cannot go, but virtually will take you in the depth to understand the archeology, span to understand the foundation stone and to understand the stories of the Bible. And even we take you to Gaza Strip, behind the scenes, we'll take you where people live virtually through Google Earth, through videos. And you can choose out of these 10 tours, you can choose anything you want. And we keep adding on these virtual tours. And not only that, you're going to be part of our Twins Tours community. And we're going to have a special group on Facebook, special groups for Twins Tours Academy. We already have friends from all over the world that join us every week. So how does Twins Tours Academy work? As I mentioned, through video courses, me and my twin brother, Tony, the twins, we will be your personal tour guides and teachers of the Bible. We will use maps, we will use pictures, we will use videos, and we will take you to the sites to see the Bible alive. By the way, this is my teaching station at home. It's very simple and very humble, but from my home, I can reach all the words, all the world with these depth of teachings from my station. And this is the new website, www.twinstours.com. We made it user-friendly. You can learn about us. You can go to the free courses. You're gonna go to the tours, the virtual tours. You're gonna go to the weekly webinars and, and, it's all done in a way that is cohesive 
and in a way that you can easily use your iPhone even or your tablet from your own comfort home at your own time. We're using Western technology to expand Eastern Christianity. What is next? Next webinar will be about the differences between the Eastern and Western culture, how the East think, how the West think in a different way. And what is the differences between the Eastern and Western culture? We're gonna give you so many examples. And the only reason to do that, to show you that the Bible is different. It was written in this part of the world in an Eastern mindset, Hebraic Aramaic mindset. And we're gonna give you a lot of examples for the next webinar, day number two. Also, every week you can register to the next webinars every week. Every Thursday, we're going to have a class that you can join. These are some social media links to stay in touch. And please share them with friends and family. I always say, sharing is caring. And I want to thank you so much. Welcome everyone to Twin Stores Academy Bootcamp day number two. We're going to learn together about the differences in the Middle Eastern cultures. We're going to do a comparison between the Western culture and the Eastern culture, and we will understand why it matters when it comes to scripture to understand the Bible in a different perspective. And I just want to give you an idea before we start. It's not that the Western perspective is the best perspective or the Eastern perspective or the Eastern culture is the best culture. No, both cultures are important and both are equal. It's not who's right, who's wrong. It's a perspective that from both of them, we're gonna get the positive, things from each culture to understand Jesus mindset so why culture matters because the reason I'm doing this webinar in Twin Tours Academy because we see so many believers that come to Israel and completely miss the core meaning of the stories of the Bible it may surprise you to know how different the Middle Eastern mindset how different is Jesus' mindset? It's a Hebraic and Aramaic way of thinking. And the Western culture is American inherited from the Greek way of thinking. So there's a gap between the East and the West. And in this webinar, we will try to make the gap less and less and less and understand the Jesus mindset. And this is why it all matters. And most Christians in the Western culture have inherited the Roman, the Greek way of thinking, meaning they think in a different way than the people of the Bible. This means that much of what you read in the Bible is not understood and can get confusing when explaining it through a Western lens. And this is why we have to understand the ancient audience. This is why we have to understand the Middle Eastern perspective, because the writers of the Bible do not write from a Western mindset. They were Semitic people from the Near East. They were in nature from the Middle East, and they wrote to people in the Middle East. That was the audience. And using a conversation in Hebrew and in Aramaic, Middle Eastern, and not English. Simply, the Bible was written to an ancient audience using ancient context that they readily understand. And this is why in Twin Tours Academy, we will introduce you to these ancient way of thinking. The more you understand Jesus' mindset, the more you understand the Bible in a deeper way. Our hope in Twin Tours Academy is to help you to understand also the context that you can apply it to your own life with your walk with the Lord. 
and apply it to the world you live in, even in the West, and carry it from the past of the first century to the present and make it much more real to you and make it so important and alive. When you understand the Middle Eastern mindset, when you understand the culture and the customs, the Bible will become colorful and meaningful. And as the early church moved away from the original culture of the first century and the original culture of the Bible, later in the fourth century, it found its home in the West. Christians began to lose touch with the original meaning of the ancient world of the Bible like cultural aspects, like customs, and the context was totally lost throughout the centuries of modernizations after Emperor Constantine in the fourth century. And even the biblical languages became unknown, like Hebrew and Aramaic. And the church is having today in the West some identity crisis. And this is why they need to go back to the roots, to the Jewish faith, our identity because when you go back to your roots you're going to have a strong foundation and this is our hope and vision everything started in the fourth century anti-semitism with emperor constantine even even out of good intentions he shifted the day of prayers and worship of the all early jewish followers of christ from saturday to sunday which made it different from the Jews. He wanted to distinct himself. He wanted to separate himself from the Jewish way of thinking. And this is why he done that. He also banned any services on Saturday. He took many pagan gods and introduced them to the church. And even, even, he just, the name of, he wanted to put, the name of Jesus over the Roman pagan gods, and he wanted to bring Christianity over the Roman Empire. And he succeeded in doing that because this is what did he know at that time. So Eastern culture versus Western culture. And I'm going to give you some examples of what I mean. And I'm going to give you some modern examples too. Because the West is like the left brain. It's all logic. Emperor Constantine was like from a Greek Roman way of thinking. And the East is like the right brain, first century. We rely upon our feelings, our emotions, our pride, and our honor in the Middle East. Both can use the other brain, by the way, East and West, both. We can learn how to use our other brain, but it's like using our offhand. You aren't coordinated or comfortable when you do that, but it's possible. If you're right-handed, try to use your left hand. It's harder, but it's possible. The right hand is like the West. It's functional. The right hand is... Uh, Productive. The left hand is nearby the heart. It's more emotional. So the left is like the East. Also, the West is like the male mindset, which is strong, all right? It's stubborn. He wants to do what he wants. The East is much like the female mindset because Aramaic and Hebrew is poetic language. It goes into the details, like the females, they are very emotional, they want to understand every single point. The Western church also is so much hungry for knowledge. You just want to learn more. You, your, like your appetite is so much open to know knowledge about the scripture. But in the East, we have this knowledge, we have this truth. This is why we are more patient. And the West tries to discover all the secrets of life. But the East, we are not worried by these things because the truth has already been presented to us because we understand scripture in the right way. The West focuses 
on the logical mind. But the East, like Jesus, does not think in the logical only, but he thinks in parables. We think in stories. We think about relationships. We think about connecting the word of God to our daily lives. So there is a lot of differences between Aramaic, Hebraic, and Greek way of thinking. Aramaic can only be spoken and understood through the heart. An intellectual person without heart contact will not grab hold or understand the depth of the language. The heart sing songs. What do you do when you're happy? Your heart rejoices. This is how the Jews throughout pilgrimage, three times a year, they have to go up to Jerusalem. They are rejoicing. They're, they're chanting the Psalms of Ascent. They're expressing their emotions from inward to outward and singing. It's like a rhythm. It's like tones. They are themselves. And because here there are expressions for unconditional love. I'm going to give you some Aramaic words. And these Aramaic words will sound like poetry. And these Hebraic words, like in Aramaic, love, obo, obo. Another word in Hebrew, love, is ahava, ahava. You see the sounds? It's way different than the English or the Latin or the Greek, which is precise, concise, and so much to the point. But there is deeper meanings for that hobo, which means hobo is the love between God the creator and his people. It's about relationships. The more you spend time reading scripture, the more you understand the word of God, and the more you have a healthier relationship. Another word, I just want you to hear the Aramaic words, how it sounds. Rahmoni. Rahmoni means merciful. Rahmoni come from the Ruach, come from the Spirit of God, which means my merciful God. Rahmoni, the eye is mine. So this it sounds like it sounds like poetry. In Hebrew, Rahmanut. Rahmanut, which is God, the creator. He has so much mercy. He has so much patience. He has so much love for his creation. And not many people are able to hear these songs of the heart. Hebrew and also Aramaic has been built specially that it embraces your heart's desires. It embraces the relationship between the father and the son and the community rather than it divides. It welcomes interpretation. You read the word of God to revere, to build a relationship. And the Aramaic language, I'm holding my Aramaic Bible here, and the Aramaic language doesn't distinguish between the mental, the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual. It is all together. They become a functioning revelation of the word of God. But the Greeks differentiate, like to categorize, the West like to differentiate between the spirit and the emotions and the physical and the mental. They like to categorize things in order to understand, in order to comprehend from the mind, but it's not about the mind. It's about the heart. I'm going to give you more examples. The Greek way of thinking, they ask why something should be done. You always, why? I need to understand why this happened. Tell me more. No. In the Aramaic, it asks what must be done. It's built into action. Not only talking, but walking the path. Greek thought is about the other word, eschatology. They always ask about the future. But the Aramaic, it's about the present reality. The Greek self-expression and freedom is a virtue. To the Aramaic and Hebraic mind, the perfect virtue is the obedience. 
that bring you the freedom, upside down kingdom. So most Christians in the Western culture have inherited the Greek way of thinking. It means they think in a different way than the people of the Bible. This means that much of what you read in the Bible is lost in a Western culture and then becomes confusing when it is explained through a Western lens. And this is why at Winstons Academy, we're gonna explain for you things in the Middle Eastern lens. We're gonna take verses from the Bible in Hebrew and in Aramaic and go back to the origins. I hope you will be able to appreciate what Twin Tours, me and Tony, our Near Eastern perspective bring you to be aware of the depth of the scripture and it will be a revelation to you. And our focus is to know Jesus through the Middle Eastern eyes. But let me give you more examples what I mean. The Greek, they worship the holiness of beauty. The Aramaic and Hebrew, we worship the beauty of holiness. The Greek seeks reasons and rational for ultimate authority. They want to make decisions based on what they know. The Aramaic and Hebraic, we go with the flow. It's a revelation which becomes the final authority. We surrender it all. The Greeks is like masculine, like the man, pragmatic, exclusive, and everything has to be exact. Because for the Greek, truth is rational and scientific. Something that can be explained and logically tested with a scientific method. This is how the Greek think. For the Westerners, the focus is on facts and validation. How can I validate an idea to be true? It is not true unless it has been tested and tried first. But in the Hebraic, it's different. You go day by day. You have to finish like... Uh, things and to go with the flow and you don't have to understand it and make rational because it's relational it's to revere so the greek is organized hebraic is relational is living it it's having the feelings the experience now the greek is boxy i want to do this i want to do this right now in Hebraic, we don't do it right now. We go with the flow. We are fluid. We live the moment. We do not make decisions immediately. We have endurance. The Greek, formal without many customs. Hebraic, informal with many customs we have. All is simple. No formality. We are ourselves. The Greek value the mind and the thought, which is great. Now, do not misunderstand me. As I said, the Greek way of thinking is amazing. The Hebraic way of thinking is also great. We need to put them together because we have great things in both cultures. The Greek is theoretical. Hebraic is action-oriented now. The Greek is timely. They come on time. That's amazing. They're well organized. But the Hebraic, we never show up on time. Now, why I am saying all of this? Because the Bible is a Hebraic Aramaic mindset. It is metaphors, parables, stories, communities. And let me drive a contrast between the parables of ancient times and the way of thinking and today. Now, why do you think Facebook, all these social media, Instagram are very successful today? This social outlet, because it's all about stories, because it's about people, because we 
are relational people. We like to be nosy. We like to know what is happening with our friends and families. We like to look at things. We like to understand and communicate with things. This is how we are made. And this is the idea of the East. And when they put it with the West in the social media, it is powerful. Why did Jesus use parables? Why idioms? Before the social media we had here, we, before, I remember from my father, the TV. This is where people were communicating and hearing the stories and hearing the news. And before the TV, I remember from my grandfather, he told me stories about his village when the old men will go together and sit nearby the radio. And this is when they get the news in the evenings. And then after that, they will share the stories, what's happening around them. And uh, they will discuss and socialize the events. So before that, in the first century way of thinking, it was all about the community, which brings all the people together, bonfires or courtyards of their homes or in the countryside from word to mouth, they discuss the news. This is how Jesus was moving from one village to another village. He was preaching in one synagogue to another synagogue, from one boat ride to another, from word to mouth, communication, social network. Why all stories are powerful. This was the best storyteller ever because they draw the people together. We are made to be together. We share ideas. We share principles. We bond together. We are made to be together. And Jesus taught all these parables, knowing that these stories would be shared over and over, word by word, and spread to villages. And to fully understand the stories that Jesus done, the parables, we must put them in the right culture. We have to put them in the custom. We have to understand the first century words of Jesus and to bring it to be alive. If we don't understand the context or the parable, we will not understand what Jesus said. So we have to go all the way back and get educated to learn about our Hebraic and Aramaic roots in order to understand the Bible in a healthy way. In the West, what is the definition of success? Most Westerners tend to define success by their level of education, PhD or doctorate. Don't misunderstand me, that's not wrong, that's great or the title they have, or the job that they have, which shapes the Western concept even of faith. Now, to us, the Middle Eastern mindset, faith and success are not about education. The West is all about achieving, achieving, achieving. In the East, it's not about what you achieve. It's about the anointing on your life that brings all of the achievements and the blessings. By the way, it's very liberating and it's more free. And you feel lighter if you think from a Middle Eastern mindset. That does not mean do not study or get educated. No, it's healthy, but it is not all about the education. The West also emphasizes on how Westerners focuses on validation. They want to know how they can validate an idea to be true. Even they want to validate scripture. They believe it can't be true unless it has first been tested. No, it's from the heart in the East. We focus, however, uh, our focus is not to validate. Our focus is not on how, but on what and who, what we have to do, what was done and who did it. So the stories in the Bible will become much more real because we will experiencing it. 
it becomes much more true to our lives because it's a relation, it's to revere and no need to rationalize it or define it or test it. We have to accept it by heart. The Eastern views is that the truth is always unfolding, always revealing. This is why Hebrew is in layers. This is why Aramaic is in layers, can go to seven layers to completion. And that is why we experience the word of God when we go back to the roots, to Jesus' way of thinking. I'm going to give you one example. John 8, 31, 32 says, So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, word, scripture, you are truly my disciples. The scripture was written in Hebrew and Aramaic. You are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Every believer know this sentence and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. But you don't understand the words before. It is a conditional statement. If you abide in my words, which means if you study my words, if you spend time reading scripture, then you will be knowing the truth and then the truth will set you free in order to experience the truth a person needs to invest a lot of time learning the word of god so that it becomes more than just an idea or a fact and it will become a reality at winston's academy will bring the reality of the depth, of the meanings, of the word of God to you. I'm going to give you an example. Jesus said, I am Torah. Torah is very hard to explain in one word. Torah, literally in Hebrew, comes from the root letter Yare. Yud, Resh, Yud, Yare, which means to shoot. God shooted Torah shooted life on Mount Sinai to Moses. Jesus said, I am Torah. I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill the law. When Jesus is saying that, it means he's saying, I came to give the right interpretations of Moses' law because I am Torah. I am life. So Torah, remember these words in English, dig. Dig with D first, direction. When you read Torah, you have direction in your life. And Jesus himself was Torah. When you read Torah, you have instructions. And then you have guidance. Dig, directions, instructions, and guidance. You dig deep into Torah. Moses, when he received Torah on Mount Sinai, he went all the way and had directions from God. He had instructions how to build the tabernacles, and he had guidance by the power of the Holy Spirit. When we read Torah, when we read scripture, we have life, life. Jesus is Torah. We just, just barely scratch the surface in uncovering the Middle Eastern perspective and how it can be applied to your life. Again, at Winsters Academy, we have a lot of online courses that explain for you Jesus' first century Eastern mindset. And our only focus and our prayers is to give you the tools in the West to understand the East and how it was originally formed, how the people lived, how the people talk together what languages, what parables meant, and the customs, the cultures, and why did they say this, and why did Jesus say that, in order to deepen your relationship with God, and to see the real image of Jesus, to see Jesus through the Middle Eastern eyes, to introduce to you Jesus, the real image, I believe today because of technology and because of 
the amazing Western inventions, like uh, all the social media and everything, is the perfect time of history to learn about Jesus' roots, to learn his mindset. And we're going to use this technology to deepen your relationship with God when you understand the Bible words. So join us in Twins Tours Academy. We have friends from all over the world. We have people from South America. We have people from all over USA. We have people even from South Africa, even from Australia. And even we have people from the Far East and the Philippines that are joining. The word of God is reaching the healthy, the Middle Eastern perspective is the perfect time of history to reach the world today. There are more than 70 hours of teachings. And every week we will add one class, one lesson. We are using Western technology to expand Jesus' mindset. And that is like a lot of courses. We, for example, we have courses about the original text of the Bible. We have a course reading the Bible in Aramaic, verse by verse, and explaining it in Jesus' mindset, starting from the book of Matthew. We have also another course about the historical geography of the land. We take you to the locations of, for example, the story of David and Goliath. We show you where the Israelites stood. We show you the topography. We show you where David went and where it's mentioned in the Bible. And it will become alive to you when you hold scripture in your hands and see the geography, see where the Philistines came from and see where David came from, from Bethlehem down and where did they met. And when the topography, you see it by your own eyes, the Bible suddenly opens things. And when we take the words from the scripture and use the meaning of every word to explain even the location, it will make complete sense. And by the way, it's so simple because we have the tools, we have the languages, we have the text. So we love to share it with you in these courses. And there's other courses like Tony is doing weekly Torah portions. He reads for you from the original Hebraic text in Hebrew. And he gives you the depth of the meaning of the Hebraic words of Revelation, of Genesis, and it's going to be an eye-opener for you. And it's great. You can use it from your own mobile phone, wherever you are, at home, or at work, or wherever, any place you want to learn more, you can open it on your mobile phone. Just put www.twinstours.com. And even from any tablet you have, the technology made it so simple. And even from your own home, from your own desktop, you can access all these courses. I want to thank you so much. And the third webinar will be interviews with students that attended these courses and what they say about it, life-changing experience. Welcome everyone to Twin Tours Academy Bootcamp day number three. We will have today interviews with former students and pilgrims that already came to the Holy Land and heard about Twin Tours Academy and experienced the teachings of the twins, Tony and Andre. And by the end of this webinar, we will have a special offer just for you. And now we're going to have and hear some testimonies of people that already experienced Twins Tours Academy. Well, I'm Jeff Husey, and I live in the western part of the United States. Well, I'm someone for whom words are important. And when we returned home from our travels with Andre, um, several of my friends and family asked about our experience. And my initial response in most cases was this. In the beginning, there was the word 
and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it wasn't in English. So for me, what was special about Andre's teaching is the breadth and depth of his understanding of the language, culture, and context of a land where scripture has really played out over history and the pastoral way he communicates that um, in a meaningful way for people in the modern age. Back to the language and context and culture. I know enough French and Spanish to be dangerous, but English is my prayer language, so to speak. I know lots of English words. There are lots of words that have multiple meaning, but in common lexicon, most of them have one or two at most. However, in Hebrew or Aramaic, the language of scripture, all the letters have multiple meanings. And that adds context to the words they comprise. So what that's meant for me is that it's completely changed the way I read and think about the Bible because you have to go way below the surface of the English text to actually understand what God's trying to communicate to us. Striking to me that dive down into the first three letters of that word, Rob, R-A-B, or however you say those in Hebrew, and how the person who's a Rob is a person of great wisdom about life and the scriptures and God and how that person is someone who um, is generally highly esteemed in the community of particularly the community of faith and then in the case of Mary, Mary Magdalene um, crying out to Jesus Rabboni it was her saying, you're my person, my mentor, my spiritual director, and I recognize you now. And I have to say that Andre has some of those qualities himself. I had the benefit of hearing your teachings initially riding around in a bus with you rather than online. And looking back, I wished I would have had the teachings online and then had them enriched um, throughout the tour. The, the connection between the words and the places and the subtle but obvious um, meanings um, really illuminated the scripture in a way that it hasn't been for me despite spending um, my entire life attending church and, and studying the Bible and so forth. If someone's a person of sincere faith, there's no reason for them not to um, really seriously consider this, um, these teachings because they are different and they are so much closer to the source than most of the teachings we experience in the West. And so I can't really recommend it highly enough. The Bible came to life in a way that I never expected. I mean, I knew I would see things, but I didn't understand that when I came back to America and that as I read the scripture now and I recall the things that I learned then and in classes since, that I see them with different eyes and really probably more accurate eyes because I never knew, for example, my best example is um, Bethlehem. And to me, Bethlehem could have been San Diego or Nevada um, or anywhere. I had no context to what it looked like, what sheep fields would be. And now whenever I read, as I'm reading um, Luke this morning, I can see it in my mind. I can understand the importance 2000 years ago that sheep played in the lives of the community where Jesus was born. And it's richer, especially yeah. during COVID. You guys started offering those during COVID and I was like waiting and I didn't, you know, everything else in my life was pretty much on my own schedule. And so I could make it to the classes and, you know, as the calls occurred. 
But since then, as my work started gearing up and my life became filled with like appointments where I have to be somewhere, I don't often as often get onto the calls themselves, but I do often get the privilege and opportunity to go ahead and hear them afterwards so that I can learn them. I can take notes and, you know, play back the part saying, wait a minute, what was that? Let me see that picture again. Now that, um, now that Tony has said this, or Andre has said this, I'm going to go back 10 screens before and, uh, pay a little bit closer, maybe even look at a, my scripture and see what you know you put up the verses a lot of times but sometimes i want to read more deeply so i've really appreciated that opportunity to do that i learn something every time just like i learn something new every time i go i learn something new from every class and you know we went 10 days full speed ahead and we saw a lot and i've gone now three times but i could go for 100 days and not see everything and so those gaps keep getting filled in um, in the different classes that are being offered. It's been great. Understanding the context, understanding idioms, things that I just took for granted that I knew it because what was in my head, I thought was right because here I am, an American. And so when I'm reading it, I'm thinking, oh yeah, I know what that is. And yes, I have a um, crush scene or um, a nativity scene in my house, but I never understood that the nativity scene that I had was a Western German version, and that it's a lot of rocks and stone when you actually get to Israel. And there's a cornerstone. I didn't know what that was. We don't have stone building in the part of America where I live. And so just I would gloss over it, but now I don't gloss over it anymore. So the fact that I can read and understand and ask more questions and share more information with others, those are all. Well, it's a different perspective so often from what I hear, I mean, obviously, um, both of you guys spend a tremendous amount of time with the Lord, praying for guidance and wisdom and direction, but you come from a perspective that's very different than mine. And so, and just because of your background, not only do you do that, but you understand where we come from. You see Americans way more often than I see um, Palestinian Israelites. And so you put that together, you understand me way better than I understand you and, and Tony as well. And so those teachings are a perspective that really opened my eyes and helped me to see the world better. I'm always enriched by the things that I learn and the time that's been taken to prepare um, a great lesson and a great opportunity for my American mindset um, to understand things, not different because mine is wrong, but different because it's not complete. And so I really always appreciate that. My name is Norby Mayfield. Good to see you all in the cameras. I am a licensed minister, a missionary, and also I am the executive director and CEO of my ranch, Agarita Creek Ranch along with all the business that I have in Texas. Because everyone needs to understand they have the Torah portions, the Aramaic classes that, of course, Andrew gives, which is one of my favorites. But then there was another one that was so important for me in which presented Israel. I mean, the Holy Land incomplete, the whole package. As a Christian for over 40 years and studying the Bible so deeply, like many of you that are out there that are passionate about knowing God better, then going to seminary, you, of course, if you go to seminary, you will take Hebrew and you will take also the Greek, right? Well, but you know what? When I took the Aramaic and then right after that I took Tony, there was like an atomic bomb explosion in my brain. The, the, the concepts of the first century in the way it was spoken by Jesus to today, it was like, for real? Is that what that means? which it brought me to a better practicality of today of the scriptures. So what I love about the teachings of Andrew and Tony is that they bring you in through this holistic view, okay? Take you to the first century, bring you back to your century, take you middle way here, bring you back. And guess what? Then you land into practicality. Now, you see, many of us, we go for higher education, so we get knowledge, right? Guess what? They give you wisdom for everyday life. Isn't that what God ultimately wants? 
wisdom for everyday life so we can worship him as we want. Take you into geography. So you see, when I say holistic, it's because they're using all your senses. Now, picture this. In camera, okay? In Zoom, you're with them, and they take you in, and you're starting to smell. You're starting to hear. Almost like you're in those cobblestone um, streets in Alice. Then they start talking about Jesus. You can feel the wind, but then you can taste it. So you see, they're using all your senses to teach you. That reality, plus the knowledge of the scriptures that they bring, they put it together. You can't help it, but it goes from the brain, because most of the time, okay, a scripture comes and stays on our brain, but it never gets here. So they land it right here, and then from here flows out. Isn't that what God wants? That the oil will flow from the head to the toes? And he does. So by you taking those courses, you will experience a gentle teaching. It's not a rush. You can come back to them if you want to, because I did many times. Because, and you know, it's one of the, and the interesting things is, there were some concepts that he exploded on my brain. But every time I went back to listening to them, it's like, but I heard that from him, and now on the recorded, I'm hearing something else. So you see, you will discover more and more as you dig and repeat. It's not interesting that Jesus repeated three times sometimes a principle. So when we repeat, it's amazing that we go back and we get a whole lot from it. So I will tell you, they will take the time there's always question and answer time, which I love that because sometimes I didn't know how to process that explosion that was in my brain. And then to live it, I can't explain the feeling because it's that, that knowledge and then wanna live it because it's coming out of you and it's like, oh wow, we gotta do this. Well, I will tell you, if you don't take the class, you have missed the greatest blessing. Why? because God is bringing this great tool at your fingertip into your house. Like me, I will sit on my desk. Sometimes I will sit on my living room or my recliner with my cup of coffee. Sometimes I was on the back porch looking at my cattle because I'm a rancher and have my cup of coffee. And listen, for those audience out there that have never come to the Holy Land, and you long and ache to come to the Holy Land, but for whatever reason you cannot make it here, you want to taste the Holy Land? You want to take the past into the, into the present and then into the future? Join these classes. Don't miss it. And for those who are in higher education and seminaries or getting their PhDs, join them. Join them because you are going to bring a wealth of information that you can't get in the university. You know why? They live here. They grew up here. They know the context. They know the time. They know the culture. Not only that, but this is people that have preserved the past and still practice it in their daily living. Who better to teach us that one that is one with them? from the past to the present. And you will explode it in the future for us because one of these days we will see Jesus. And guess what? You will see him in his radiance because you have learned to love him more by learning more from him. So I ask you, why wait? What are you waiting for? Today is the day. Look also what other former students are talking about and saying about Twin Stores Academy. We have Bruce, he's saying, my walk with the Lord has grown much deeper from these teachings. I now have a fuller understanding of the scripture since it has come to life. And look also, another student by the name David, he said, I gained a whole new insight on the customs from the first century. Never before I have understood the culture and historical setting of Jesus' life so clearly. And what we do at Winstons Academy, we teach you the roots of the scripture. We take you to the Hebrew. We take you to the original Aramaic. And once you understand these languages, the roots of the first century culture, custom, and context will come alive to you. 
and your life will be transformed to be more like Christ. And this is our vision and this is our heart. And also, when you enter to Twin Stores Academy, you're going to have free webinars. And because most believers inherited the Western mindset and don't understand the full meaning of the roots of the Bible. So these free webinars are each week and they will help you to understand the Middle Eastern mindset and to know the heart of Jesus. Also, these are the webinars for every week. So when you enter to twinstours.com, every week we update in you webinars. There's reading from the Aramaic. There is also about the modern history of the state of Israel. And we'll talk a lot about Jewish festivals. And also we have virtual tours. Of course, nothing compares to touring the Holy Land and seeing the Bible come to life when you come to the land, when you come and visit Israel. And this experience of the understanding of your identity in Christ become alive. But if you can't make it to Israel, we have virtual tours. We've done a lot of them, like coming to the old city, seeing the garden tomb, the Dead Sea, Masada, Herodion, the city of David, and you can book your own virtual tour where you will understand the Bible alive. And me or Tony will give these virtual tours and you can choose it any day you want. Not only that, when you join Twin Stores Academy, you can be part of our Facebook page and you're going to join our private community and you can hang out with me and Tony and ask us any questions. So the launch will be tomorrow, twinstours.com. And I encourage you, get into the website and get all these valuable teachings and courses. The value of these courses is $997 for all of these online courses. There is more than nine courses taking place, but we have a special offer. If you access this for the next three days, the cost $197. You can access all the courses. You can have a new course every month and 20% special reduction for the virtual tours. And you can also get a free ebook one Friday in Jerusalem. And also with the Facebook monthly group questions and answers with me and my twin brother, Tony. But guess what? We have another deal for you. If you get for the next three days, the early bird pricing is not anymore 197. It will be only $97. You can get $100 off with the early bird pricing for the next three days. For all this knowledge, for all these courses, only $97. And then you're going to receive a message that you are a member in Twin Tours Academy. You're going to receive a code, the 20% of the virtual tours. You can download my first ebook, One Friday in Jerusalem, and you're going to have an access exclusive for a special Facebook group only for Twin Tours Academy members. Also, I want to share with you about the courses, Twin Stores Academy. When you click in, we have nine courses. We have a course about Aramaic interpretation of the book of Matthew. We have another course about historical geography of the Holy Land. We're going to take you to the sites with eight lessons, more than 480 minutes of explaining the geography of the Bible. And also, we have another course, weekly Torah portions with seven lessons with Tony explaining you the Hebraic scripture, starting from the book of Genesis. And this is what it will look like. And this is the Aramaic course from the book of Matthew, from chapter 1 to 28. You can choose at your own time, at your own pace, what chapter you want to learn about the Bible, verse by verse, in Aramaic. 
also this is how the historical geography looks there is eight lessons here you can go see the introduction about the geography of the land then i divided it into another seven categories the coastal plain the shvila the lowland the hill country uh, the galilee you see it's one hour teachings almost each lesson the golan heights so you're going to have more details. If you have been in Israel before and you want to revise all your information back about geography, you enter this course. If you've never been in Israel, you can go and learn about geography. And when you come, you will be much more alert to know more what to expect. Also, we have other courses and like the weekly Torah portions, the parasha that Tony gives and the uh, parashat is section of reading from the hebrew bible tony will show you and read with you in hebrew and explain words in hebrew to explain for you what is the parasha what is the torah portion reading of that week and he have so many lessons on that also other courses like the lord's prayer in aramaic and there is idioms of the bible another course and jewish festivals and also, we have Christians of the Holy Land, five lessons, more than 300 minutes. And we have my signature tour. We're going to take you to the land of the Bible and take you all around through videos day by day from Jesus' birth to his resurrection. And also the history of the Holy Land is coming soon. Already we have few lessons there. So there is already nine courses. And all of that, all of that, is only for $97. You can get all access. And remember, the free gift that you're going to receive. Also, this free gift is only for the first people who register. They will get 20% of all the virtual tours, like the City of David or exploring the Dome of the Rock, going places on Mount Moriah with the camera, with us on Zoom, with Google Earth. We take you inside the sites and explains about the importance of each site historically, spiritually, and archeologically. And then we take you to Gaza Strip in a virtual tour to learn about the Christians in Gaza. And on top of that, free gift, the ebook, One Friday in Jerusalem, Walking to Calvary, a tour, a faith, a life. This road that is our playground, me and Tony, and our battleground. We've seen tourists from all over the world coming and walking the stations of the cross. And this book will explain for you station by station from an archaeological perspective, from a historical perspective, and from a spiritual perspective. This is all for you. If you are seeking to understand the truth, if you want to grow your relationship deeper with Christ, if you're curious about the deeper meanings of the Aramaic and Hebrew scripture, and if you want to learn more the Bible from someone that lived in the land of the Bible, that someone you can trust with the sources, join us and join our community to understand more about Hebraic, Aramaic, mindset of Jesus to understand more your faith and deeper your relationship and know a lot about the Holy Land. It's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be exciting. You're going to learn so much.